Hello, this is going to be very short. It's about code completion. So in a bunch of different IDEs, such as this is PyCharm, right? PyCharm, as you can see it right there. Everybody should know this one. This is by JetBeans or Visual Studio Code or any other programming language. Um, we'll start with Visual Studio Code because it's faster. There is something called code completion, right? And another word for it is IntelliSense. So it intelligently senses whatever code you want to complete. So let's say that in Python or Java, right, we have, or whatever programming language that uses these, I just know Java and Python for now. But let's say we have an integer, integer of type 5, and we want to um, do something to it, but we don't want to go to Google Chrome or the Internet or Firefox or Internet Explorer or Safari to look for the documentation. We want fast uh, results to know which functions, which methods, and which uh, fields or variables are inside that data type. And we could do that quickly without having to memorize uh, everything in each data type and for yourself too if you ever create a bunch of classes and you don't remember the different functions you've made we have IntelliSense or code completion so that you could rely on conceptual learning and not just on memorizing every single function every single variable inside the class every single field all the properties or the members so x dot in most uh, IDEs after you push the dot, including like NetBeans, um, Eclipse, uh, the different Java ones, right, the common ones, or Atom, or um, this is Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, um, the, the one for Java by JetBeans, I totally forget it right now, but um, you're going to have a bunch of functions like these, and you're also going to have um, the static uh, variables in them. So for example in uh, Java you would put something like math and then you would do dot and then it would show a list and you could put pi math.py, math.random, uh, math.whatever. There's a whole bunch of them. In Python you're going to have and it's going to be obvious. In Java it's obvious which ones are functions. There's a little f or it looks like a function in Java, but in, I just bit my tongue, in Python, it's different. So whenever you see these double underscored lines, it's a function, and it's it's going to be part of whatever data type you're making. If you, if you make your own, then you're going to uh, have to go off of the things that you've made only, or whatever is uh, inherited um, as a base class, right? I mean, that's a whole nother thing. So for example, let's say we want to convert this integer into a string without using the, the string externally. So we click on string, and I think that'll be it. I would put this right, and then we can print the string, right? Oh my gosh, that's so cool, look at that. Uh, Visual Studio Code has more, is easier to look at the documentation than PyCharm. Same thing can happen in PyCharm, x equal to 7, and we'll do something like x dot, uh, let's do absolute value, that one will make more sense, it's fat. it's easier to understand, uh, absolute value, there is absolute, and it's going to put self in there, we can, um, oh I have to, so like, when you push dot and you look at absolute, look at uh, what is going to be the arguments. Right here, look at my mouse. You see where it says self? That means that the actual variable that you're putting the x dot to is going to be put in there. So x is equal to 7. 7 is going to go into self. And then the return type on the right is going to be right here, integer. So that means that, um, and the return type is going to be separate usually, so that means uh, if we do x is equal to negative 7, and then we do absolute, right? And then uh, we put some of this, and let's uh, print it, okay? And uh, what we're going to get is 7. See, 7. And it's actually negative 7, but...
but we use the absolute value and we put the self into the parentheses, right? But if we were to um, print x again, it would go back to negative seven because this is just returning that. Uh, and of course, there's the same thing for every uh, data type where the IntelliSense works. So let's change it to string. And you could check right here, is numeric. You have the self. The x right here goes into the self. So it's an empty string. And the empty string will go into self as an as a argument. And it's going to check if it's a numeric number. And it's going to return a string. OK? So uh, if, we could, if we could do is numeric, and we'll put 1, and we'll print it, right? And see, it says true. It returns true, but remember, it's a string. It's not a Boolean. So that means when you use IntelliSense, you have to be cautious uh, as to and aware as to what data type is being returned by every function built into each data type. So um, x dot is numeric returns a string, and many of the functions in there are going to return different things. You don't have to memorize it. Code completion is there for you. So you don't have to memorize things, and it should be obvious by the actual method. So when you see is lower, um, what you should be gathering is, oh, it's lower case, and the self is what the x puts in there, and then it returns a string. And as you could tell, most of the data types that these functions return are string. So it's going to get repetitive once you start practicing Python or Java uh, or whatever programming language that has IntelliSense. Uh, the, that the return types are going to be a certain way that has like a pattern. And you, you get into it as, as you go on. So that's the basics of code completion. Uh, just be sure to look at documentation. Let me see. I think it's easy to look at documentation on, uh, on uh, oh, I think it's Control Q, right? On Visual Studio Code, but PyCharm is more popular for some reason. So we click this one, Control Q. So there it is. Uh, in PyCharm, it's different in every IDE, but this is what documentation looks like. In PyCharm, you click it and you push control Q and it shows you what the um, function does it actually explains it and shows whatever it returns um, it also shows the interpreter and environment which I can make a video on environments that'll be good so yeah that is um, IntelliSense just remember that these double under uh, scored uh, things are actually functions you see the M right there M means method F means function P, I don't know what the heck that means, but we'll figure it out later. It's only a few of those. Um, but yeah, that is the basics of IntelliSense. Hope you learned something.